Hey everybody, Trey here. Wanted to give a little bit of an update this morning as we've had an upgrade to moderate risk for today, Wednesday, December 14th, across far southeast Louisiana into southern Mississippi and southwest Alabama. Uh, there was uh, quite a bit of model data that kind of showed that the severe threat may be increasing this morning. So I wanted to do just a quick update. This isn't going to be a full sort of deep dive forecast discussion but we've had an increase in the potential for some significant severe weather, including strong tornadoes across that moderate risk area today. Uh, so I wanted to do a quick little update here, kind of show you what's going on and why they decided to upgrade here. So diving right in, we'll just go right to the upper air maps here. Big old trough, closed low, centered over the central plains with a pretty significant sort of shortwave extending down from that main trough. It's kind of lagging behind here across the southern plains. The main activity is going to be out here. We already have storms ongoing out across Louisiana into Mississippi. So these storms have become very much kind of removed from the main sort of forcing. You have kind of your cold front that was kind of sagging down to the south, kind of pushing things along. What storms increasingly kind of yesterday became more sort of prefrontal with time as they, they kind of outran the cold front. I think that's kind of why we saw a slightly more discrete mode than what was expected yesterday. And that has continued today. These storms are well out ahead of the cold front. Let's go to our surface data real quick here. So you can see where exactly the cold front is. It's kind of back in here across southern Louisiana through kind of western Mississippi and going up north there through kind of far western Tennessee. Cold front is right in there, and it's kind of slowly now moving to off toward the east. It's, again, kind of removed from the main forcing at the moment. So it's, it's kind of moving quite slowly now off toward the east, and we have numerous storms ongoing at this point. Kind of along and right out in front of it, you can see we have several kind of, this kind of main line back here from kind of Jackson off to toward, actually northeast of Jackson down toward uh, the southwest Mississippi vicinity into kind of south central Louisiana with now numerous warm sector supercells starting to fire here. We even have some tornado warnings ongoing down here south of Lafayette, Louisiana. But you can see just a number of discrete supercells already starting to fire here in the open warm sector. Um, and that is only going to continue throughout the day. We have a setup that is quite favorable for discrete storm development out here in the open warm sector because we're kind of farther removed from the main sort of forcing here. We're in kind of this just broad swath of southwesterly flow aloft out here across the southeast. We've got just a couple of little sort of short waves rotating through. You can see the little kink ongoing there, maybe slightly convectively enhanced right there, but a little bit of a kink there, maybe something back in here across East Texas. Those are going to rotate through the base of this trough throughout the day, and those may be the impetus for some warm sector supercell development as well throughout the afternoon as we have just kind of broad forcing out across the open warm sector here as we're again well removed from the main sort of belt of enhanced flow, main sort of shortwave rotating through. You can see what's happened over the past kind of uh, 12 hours or so. This is the main sort of center of our trough right in here. You can see where that shortwave was over the desert southwest um, overnight and now it's kind of shooting through. It's kind of ejecting into the southern plains and we just are kind of left with this sort of broad swath of flow, of southwest flow, out across the open warm sector. So the forcing overall is going to be much more subtle than it was, say, yesterday morning when we had kind of that more linear organization to the storms. That's not going to be as much of a case today. We'll still have our main sort of band of storms um, back here. I'll zoom out here on the radar once again. We'll have our main band of storms that continues to move through and kind of will eventually kind of swing off toward the east as that trough finally does move in. But we have a very wide warm sector today for the potential for numerous warm sector supercells here. Go down 8 850 real quick. You can see the low level jet very, very solid, entrenched across the region here out of the south, south, east, south, southwest, excuse me. So very strong flow in the low levels and a warm sector that is very, very wide. Uh, let me go to the surface data once again. You can see where that warm sector is. 70s dew points located down here across southeast Louisiana into southern Mississippi into Alabama. So a very broad sort of warm sector here for storms to take advantage of today before the trough does eventually swing through and really the cold front slash kind of or kind of Pacific front swings through and kind of uh, pinches the warm sector off kind of later this evening. But for several hours today, we'll have a nice broad warm sector with very juicy air in the low levels for uh, a discrete supercell development. 
Let's take a look at some soundings here. This is the Slidell, Louisiana sounding from 12Z this morning. You can see it was already favorable for severe weather at that time. Very strong low level instability here. You can see zero to three kilometer cape at 137 joules per kilogram. That's very, very uh, high, especially for out in the southeast. We do have fairly weak-ish lapse rates throughout the profile here. Not terrible, though. We, we see some pretty nice, decently steep lapse rates here in the low levels. And that is often a uh, discriminating factor out here in the southeast. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. Uh, last week's, or a couple, the moderate risk event a couple weeks ago, um, was struggle, struggled a little bit with low-level lapse rates, although they were, they were decently adequate. Uh, kind of the same situation here, decently adequate lapse rates here in the low levels. A little bit of an inversion here. Um, out uh, just below 500 millibars. That shouldn't be too much of an issue. That should erode with time as that forcing moves in. But decently unstable atmosphere, especially in the low levels. And that hodograph, very much favorable for discrete supercells, for tornadic supercells here. Lots of curvature there. Veering winds in the low levels. Lots of clockwise curvature in that low level hodograph. Uh, and a long hodograph as well. Effective shear, effective bulk shear over about 60 knots or so. So very uh, primed environment here this morning for rotating supercells. Uh, out across the warm sector. And you can see right now, this is our VWP. If you're not familiar with VWPs, it's a vertical wind profile. And basically, we can take from radar data uh, and we can construct a hodograph from what the radar data is showing. And this is the current uh, vertical wind profile at Slidell. And you can see it is, is still very favorable for some tornadic supercells here. Lots of curvature there in the low levels. You can see there up to a kilometer, some nice curvature there. Decently long looking hodograph, zero to, uh, five, zero to 500 meter storm relative helicity at uh, over 150 meter squared per second squared. So very favorable environment that and that should only increase with time as we go through the day today. So once again, let's go ahead and take a look at some model data real quick. And you can see that um, shortwave does center it across Texas, pivots through eventually by about 21 to 0 Z, kind of impinges into the region. But before then, we have this kind of just broad southwesterly flow across the warm sector. So until that happens, we're going to have a very kind of subtle forcing regime out in the open warm sector. And that's going to provide the impetus for discrete storm development. And in this kind of environment, when you have um, this kind of uh, wind shear profile and instability, especially low level instability, that is usually a recipe for some nasty storms out here in the warm sector, especially out here in the southeast. We'll take a sounding here from basically from the Hattiesburg, Mississippi area that will be kind of out in the open warm sector to kind of give you an idea what, what it's going to look like here. This is at 18Z, so a couple hours from now, right about lunchtime, um, you can see very strong looking hodograph there, lots of veering winds in the low levels with height. Uh, and very strong low-level instability, 3 cape, almost 200 joules per kilogram there. So that is very, very favorable for any of these supercells to start producing tornadoes. And so a very impactful event likely for today across the warm sector. We'll both, again, we'll have both those, that main line, kind of that is the main prefrontal line that, that eventually will, the uh, Pacific front will catch up to that. But this is going to be the story for much of the afternoon. Just lots of discrete supercells firing in the open warm sector. Um, ready to pounce uh, with this on this environment here. We'll go on a couple of hours to kind of show you how the, uh, the uh, environment will progress here. We'll take a couple soundings, actually. So this is from southwest, southeast Mississippi. You can see it only gets better with time. Very strong low-level instability still. Um, over, over 1,500 joules per kilogram of mixed layer cape with a very favorable looking hodograph for some strong tornadoes, especially with the discrete mode that is favored out across southern Alabama, much of the same, even stronger low-level instability modeled out here by this particular NAM run. Let's take a look at just the HER run real quick. A lot of the models were kind of similar to this this morning in showing discrete supercell development, but this is the latest HRRR run. You can see that, that uh, prefrontal line here that continues here across southern Louisiana into southern Mississippi. And with time, you can see we just get a kind of conveyor belt of these discrete supercells out in the open warm sector, uh, out just ahead of the main line. Main line will have a tornado threat as well, uh, given that environment in place. But these discrete supercells will have the greatest threat for strong tornadoes as we go into the afternoon. Tornado Watch is already out here, has been out for a while. A um, few tornadoes and a couple intense tornadoes likely. I would not be surprised to see them put out another uh, Tornado Watch this afternoon. 
um, as we go into the next couple of hours, given the abundance of discrete storms already firing in the warm sector, wouldn't be surprised to see them extend this or at least uh, perhaps even bump up the probabilities here uh, with this uh, setup. So very interesting setup for today, very potent setup likely with a numerous discrete supercells. The strong tornado threat is going to be the main threat today in that 15 hatched area across far southeast Louisiana, south southern Mississippi into southwest Alabama as we go into the afternoon and evening hours today. Um, so if you live in these areas, keep those weather radios handy. Keep Stay tuned to your local sources of weather information. Uh, it's going to be a pretty active af active afternoon uh, today in, across portions of the southeast. So thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.